Hey everyone, now we're going to go over some of the, uh, the kind of the masking techniques you want to use when repainting. Uh, really this works for any warbird uh, of any type. And what you're trying to do here is you want to mask the different colors that are, are being used. Um, for the, uh, the Corsair project, it's going to be uh, white, intermediate blue, and kind of a, um, a dark U.S. Navy blue. This is a tricolor. Um, if you were doing it a modern jet, let's say like uh, an F-14 Tomcat, um, or an F-18 Hornet, which has the same three different colors of gray, you could use this exact same technique for that. Um, I also use the same technique on uh, both my P-51 Mustangs. Uh, so I know that it works relatively well. And so I'm gonna kind of go over what I've learned and how to, you guys can, can follow what I'm doing. So to start with, um, pick up a set of, um, a pad of tracing paper here. Uh, I just picked this up at a uh, art supply store. Anywhere is really fine. And all you want to do is get a sheet of tracing paper out. And for this, I'm going to use a uh, permanent marker. You can use pretty much whatever. The nice thing about the permanent marker is, is that it, uh, when I draw on the tracing paper, it doesn't leave any indents in the, uh, in the foam. I just want to go real light. So what I'll do is I'll actually start up on the, uh, on the cowl first. And I'm just going to lay this on top here where I know the, um, in fact, I'm just going to move this back just a little bit here. There we go. Um, I'm just going to lay the, uh, the mask on here. What we're going to do is we're going to be masking off the intermediate blue and highlighting the, uh, we're going to, we're going to paint the, uh, the dark blue. So, um, I'm going to give a couple marks on here so I know where I'm at. Uh, I'm just going to give a few wing marks here. There we go. Just, that's the nice thing with the tracing papers. You can actually see through it. So once I have that down, I'm actually going to um, kind of freehand the, uh, the masking shape here. And I know that it's going to come across this panel line here on the cowl. And so that's the shape. So I know that this here is the mask that I need to separate the, um, the dark blue from the intermediate blue. And I'll use this area here um, to help line it up. So. Um, I already have one of these done already, and what's nice is when you make this cutout, so, and I'll actually just go through and, and, and show you what it'll look like here. When you get this cut out, it will actually be the same for, um, for both sides. You just got to reverse the mask. So you make it one time, and you can use it for both. So let's go ahead, and uh, I'm just going to demonstrate here. We'll go ahead and cut this out. Cut around the uh, the wing uh, area here, so I can know where to line it up. And you can line it up on anything. You can pick a panel line. You can pick anything you want. All you're trying to do is just give yourself a point of reference. So then I have my shape here, and then I go and I say, all right. So I reline it up on the uh, on the wing here, and make sure it lines up on the panel line that I'm looking for. So this will give me that nice edge that follows along here. Um, between the uh, the two different color blues. Now the trick is, is that you can adjust the uh, amount of uh, kind of overspray or that demarcation between the different colors by controlling how far away this tracing paper is from the surface. If you lay it on here, um, right on the surface, and it's you know touching, uh, you're going to get very little demarcation between the colors. It's going to be a very fine line, very very exact. Uh, basically as if you ran a piece of masking tape on it. That's not what we want to do here. We want a little bit more variation in that. We want to increase that distance away on the, um, on the tracing paper here, our mask, to kind of give you a more of a feathered edge. And that feathered edge will help give you the, the more realistic look of actually somebody spraying this thing uh, either in the field um, or at the factory. And that's really what we're, we're going to be mimicking here using uh, spray paint. Now, if you're really good, you could airbrush that as well, and then you'd even get a more realistic look. But we're gonna kinda, we're gonna do it in here uh, pretty simple, pretty easy. We're just gonna use some tracing paper and our uh, can of uh, Tamiya spray paint, and we're gonna be able to replicate that look pretty easily. So to do that, um, use a little piece of masking tape here. I thought I had some out here, but I'll just grab some. Not that I would use this particular, uh, this tape here. I have some blue tape already done up on some, um, on some masks already. So I just roll the tape over and I want to make sure I keep the diameter pretty big. So there you can see it's about a, uh, it's about a quarter inch uh, diameter on the uh, tape and then I'll stick it on the pant leg 
number of times and then I will stick it on the mask and then I will lay it on here. And the key here is, is to just get the masking tape touching on that. Um, you don't want to press it down really hard. You want to make sure that it's just lightly touching the surface. And the reason why you want to do that is, is you don't want to pull any of the, the underlaying paint off. You want to make sure um, that that paint stays safe. And you also want to make sure you don't squish that roll of uh, tape down because then that's going to in, um, kind of decrease that feathered edge a little bit. And so that would defeat your whole purpose of, of doing this. The other key to making this technique work is that you have to use, um, you got to come at this thing at a perfect 90 degree angle. So if I was to mask this area here and I was going to spray this area, what would happen is that I'd actually be shooting the paint parallel to the mask and that would actually be covering over the area that I want to mask. So you got to make sure you, I'll have to come around on this side and I'll have to paint perpendicular to my mask this way. And you're saying, then what do you do about the, uh, the upper surface here? Well, um, the, both the upper and lower surface, the white and the dark blue, I pre-painted in advance. And so what I did is I ran the paint across the top, I ran the paint across the bottom, and then I started to meet in the middle a little bit with the masking. And that way I'm always making sure I'm spraying completely perpendicular to the mask. So I have some masks already made up uh, that I use for the other side and I'm going to make sure they're, they're equivalent uh, in terms of how they look. They're sim fairly symmetrical, but I don't want them too symmetrical and I don't want them too perfect. So what I ended up doing is just run taking a pair of scissors here and just kind of running along the, uh, the edges a little bit differently than I did on the opposite side, just to give it a slight amount of variation, just because, you know, these were done um, with, a, with a lot of human work rather than a, um, you know, a fancy spray machine or a computerized program. They were done by, by either, you know, guys or girls with a spray, um, kind of a, a spray gun like you'd use for your car. Um, that's how these things were painted. So they're, they're not supposed to be perfect. So if you make it perfectly symmetrical and you make all the lines absolutely crystal clear and perfect, it will actually take a little bit of that realism away. So it's okay to have a little variation here that it's not as perfect um, so if you see a restored airplane, if you're taking, if you're looking on Google and you're looking at pictures of Corsairs that are restored, they are absolutely perfect airplanes. In reality is they were never that perfect in wartime. So we're going after a wartime look here. So we're going to go a little bit, a little bit more imperfect than uh, what you'd see from the restored one. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my, uh, my mask here and we're going to lay that on here. Uh, you see, I already have a piece of, uh, uh, newspaper over the tail here because I don't want to get any um, overspray on that. And then we're actually going to go through and I'm going to show you how to um, paint the dark blue now that we have the, the white, we have the intermediate blue, and we're ready for the dark blue. So let me come around to that side and do that. All right, so we have our first uh, mask here, which is going to be for the tail section. And from this, it needs to go pretty much in line with the... Um, see if I can do it here. It has to go in line with the, so for this it needs to go, it needs to start here at the, uh, where the wing root meets, meets the fuselage or the, um, the trailing edge of the wing. And it needs to go about in the center line of the, um, where the um, uh, horizontal stabilator is. So let's go ahead and put this into play here, all right? And this is actually the same one I used for the opposite side. Do this and just kind of lay it on here. We don't want to make it too tight. So we want to make sure that we get that nice kind of demarcation edge here. So we're just going to lay it on here. And if you do it right, it should. See, I got the, this side's a little bit more difficult because you have the, um, uh, you have the el um, elevator control horn sticking out here. So, and the, um, let's do a little change here. I have the PVC stand in the way and it's kind of making the mask stick up a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, just move that down. There we go. I'm going to cover the white. Um, I do want to make sure I cover the back here just a little bit. Okay, so I have the mask laid on here. I'm actually going to try to rotate this just a little bit because I want to shoot at about a 90 degree angle to the to the surface and I have it rotated a little too far down so I'd actually be spraying down a little too much on an angle. So you can see now I have this line that extends back here. 
The intermediate blue is down below. I have the tail masked off. The top surface has already been shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my spray can. Okay, give it a shake. Okay, here we go. You go light, light coats over it. There we go. A little bit more there. And uh, now, once that is done, we can go ahead and remove, oh, got a little bit more here to go. Okay, let's go ahead and remove that. There you go, easy as that. Okay, move that out of the way. Move that out. And there you go. I have the, uh, the different color blues are already done. And next thing I'll do is I'll do the same thing on the front here. All right, sorry about the interruption on that one. Let's go ahead and uh, do the, uh, the front here. So go ahead, we know we, from our mask, we wanna go right on the, um, this panel line on the cowl. And we want that to also reach the leading edge of the wing root. So we'll go right there. There you go. Stick that on there like that. Tuck the mask down. And just like before, we want to shoot perpendicular to it. So we'll grab our spray can. Check around the edges, make sure we got it. I think we got good coverage on that, so then we pull the mask off. And away we go. There. So that wraps up on how to uh, do the painting and camouflaging of the uh, the E-Flight F4U Corsair that we are turning into a uh, Dash A1A model instead of the Dash 4, which was single colored. And so if you guys got any questions on that, by all means, just leave them in the comments below. And hopefully this trick will help you guys out when you're camouflaging and repainting of warbirds because it's a really simple trick and it only takes a few minutes to do and the results really look good.